Did you know that the droid sniper originally used the assassin droid IG-88's model in the early versions of Battlefront 1? Although this was later changed to the standard B1 unit, the name stayed the exact same. Sadly, other skins like the black clone sniper were also cut out, and early pictures of droids used the Genosis variant, which is still the case in first person mode. In fact, not only were the map layouts different from the demo versions, usually being much flatter and bigger in comparison, but also the vehicles in them. Naboo planes intended to have the MTT for the Separatist side as an equivalent to the Republic ATTE, while the clones would have had the gunship and shield generators seen in the story mode, all of which were completely removed probably because of hardware limitations, which is a shame since the MTT didn't make a return until EA's Battlefront 2 in Walker Assault. And much like the Empire, the Republic have more vehicles shown in the movies which made it in-game, but the Separatists had just as much vehicles inspired from the EU that never made it in the final cut. Along with the AAT, the CIS was going to have the GAT, which was first introduced in Episode 2's video game The Clone Wars and kind of looks like the Halo tank. Funny enough, the cut Republic Walker, the ATXT, and the now iconic ARC-170 also first made an appearance in Episode 2's game, going on to be featured in every other entry in the series with the exception of EA's Battlefront 1 since it was only the original trilogy era. Speaking of which, you might have noticed that both the Empire and Rebels reused some of the Republic vehicles across multiple Battlefront games. Although it makes sense lore-wise, they were meant to have their own faction-specific ships in the original Battlefront. The TIE Crawler as the Empire signature tank and surprisingly enough the Republic juggernaut for the rebels which was later implemented in Renegade Squadron, Battlefront 2 sequel on the PSP, as well as the Corellian attack gunship for the rebels and the Imperial shuttle, both of which were delayed until the Starfighter class system in the sequel. And unlike Battlefront 2 which uses maps only seen in the movies, Battlefront 1 included maps inspired off EU content like Yavin Arena which was from the Clone Wars micro series, and Renvar Citadel which features an abandoned Jedi temple with the tomb of a famous Jedi from the Old Republic public named Ulic Kel Drama. But many other off-screen planets were also meant to be included, some of the coolest being the planet Despire, which was a map on the planet's moon space station where the Death Star's orbital construction happened. The Sith world of Korriban, which was eventually featured in Renegade Squadron some years later. Thyfera, the home planet of Bacta Minerals that heals the players and heroes in the movies. And the old Jedi hub world of Ozus. Plus, each planet in Galactic Conquest gives a specific bonus for being captured. So, cut maps like the manufacturing planet of Raxus Prime would have increased vehicle armor by 10%, the docking planet of Corellia increases their spawn rate, and my personal favorite, being able to construct the Death Star once the Spire Station is captured by the Empire, using it to blow up other planets. Most of which were eventually given to other planets anyways, or included in faction bonuses which is a reward for winning 4 battles in a row. Speaking of which, Unlike in Battlefront 2, most planets have two maps, with the exception of Tatooine. That's because Jabba's Palace was actually a DLC map available for the Xbox and PC, making it the only planet to have three locations. Also, you might have not noticed that the picture of Naboo on the game's cover art shows a different time of day to the launch version. That's because some beta versions of maps were set in different times of day. Console or PC versions of maps also differ slightly. Renvar Citadel has a night sky on console but is set during the day on PC. And for some reason the droid pilot and assassin droid switch skins depending on the version. Also, in most maps if you look at the sky you'll see these large cruisers flying at low altitude. These were intended to be drivable vehicles, each faction would have had one transport cruiser that they could fly over command posts as an extra spawn. Starfighters would have most likely been exclusively spawning in the capital ship hangar since they also had four classes at this stage of development. But this feature was cut out early on and instead mostly implemented in Battlefront 2's space battle system. Just one of many amazing features that were cut out from the original and added in the sequel. Find out more in this video here.